this is our 100th episode and I talked with our team, wanted to do something special for you uh, to mark this uh, achievement here on the Grow Your Practice podcast. So what we did is um, I, the interview that I'm about to share with you here and we're going to get into in just a minute is with John Logar. Now, I wanna to explain to you uh, who John Logar is. Uh, you're going to see um, John has a company called Consulting Unleashed. He's also had, I think it's eight or nine other companies. Um, he is very active on an international level. When we're not in a pandemic, he spends much of his time traveling uh, all, all over the world, including all over the U.S. Um, John was our first, so at the first large event that we had here at Breakthrough, which would, I believe was October of 2016 in Denver, Colorado, John was the keynote speaker and he was electrifying. Uh, and just to give you an idea of, of that event. So up until that point, we had hosted, I think three or four small events. Uh, most of them, I, I think we did one in Orlando with 10 owners. And then we had a few here in Harrisburg, central Pennsylvania with maybe up to 40 owners. Uh, this was our first large event. We had over 200 uh, practice owners in the room. It was insane for us because we, we, I think we had six or seven uh, breakthrough team members at the time. So it was a lot to handle. And, and John came in and really uh, helped with the event. He delivered an amazing keynote speech where he was talking about lead generation and marketing funnels and really you know, how we need to market direct our practices direct to the consumer and attract more new patients. And he did a, a fantastic job um, of talking about things that at that point, weren't really concepts within physical therapy yet. They were in other uh, industries, other businesses, but they weren't in PT. Uh, John did this exercise that I asked him to do here in the podcast episode with Jay Abraham's Three Ways to Increase Business and Top Line. Um, the other thing that I want to say is John went on to do uh, 13 or 14 events with us, uh, quarterly events, always amazing. The other thing, he always gifted a book to me, including one of my favorite books of all time, uh, Stephen Pressfield's The the War of Art, not The Art of War, but The War of Art. Fantastic book. Um, the other thing that I wanted to comment about, John, was uh, he has been up till 3 a.m. with us, um, you know, working on business. He is also, because he is in Australia, uh, as, as his home base, he's also gotten up at 3 a.m. because of the time difference with us. So I hope you really um, enjoy and appreciate this episode, and thank you for allowing us to get to 100 episodes. Enjoy. Welcome to the Grow Your Practice podcast. Hi, I'm your host, Chad Madden, owner of Madden Physical Therapy and Breakthrough. Join me each week as we dive into the best practices, systems, principles, tips, and tricks to help you grow your private practice. Hey everybody, Chad Madden here with the Grow Your Practice podcast. And in this episode, we have another legend for you. So uh, th this gentleman is uh, John Logar. Uh, John has, if you've been to breakthrough events in the past, whether it's a boot camp, a growth X quarterly, et cetera, uh, oftentimes John is there. He leads one of the most electrifying and exciting sessions where he talks about trends in the marketplace. So in this discussion, we're gonna talk and ask John specific questions about what he's seeing in the marketplace right now uh, in the US with regards to healthcare and what he's seeing worldwide as well. So welcome to the call here, John Logar. Nick, thanks. It's been way too long since we've been having a face-to-face -face connection here, my friend. Yeah, the, the, I'm very much looking forward to this. I, I, I haven't gotten to uh, see you or talk with you often. Uh, we went from hanging out every, every three months or so, and now I haven't seen you, I think, live in two years. Uh, and just so everybody knows, uh, because of your heavy Brooklyn accent, uh, you're in uh, Brisbane, Australia right now, correct? I'm in a place called Corumban, uh, Australia, which is about an hour south of Brisbane. I'm on the Pacific coast. Uh, it's summer where I am. I know it's winter where you are in PA. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I'm on the, on the Pacific coast in Australia. Um, but uh, I do spend most of my time in the United States. So Great. And uh, Pacific coast, that's where the Great Whites are? Or is it? Yeah, we've got a few of them hanging off the coast here. Absolutely. Nice. You, you need some killer yeah. whales in there to. Uh, yeah, yeah, we need some killer whales. We 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 essentially Australians are shark biscuits. 
you know, when we go surfing out here, we're on our, we're on our shark fish. So, yeah. That's great. Hey, podcast listeners, when we make assumptions about others, it's just not fair. In spite of that, I'm going to make an assumption about you. You have a growth mindset. You want to help more people, leave a bigger impact, build a better practice. Am I close? If I'm right, then I have a unique offer that I think you'll be interested in. But first, if you're a regular listener, you probably know that this is brought to you by Breakthrough, the leading platform for private practice growth. Breakthrough's mission is to help people in pain get back to normal, live healthier, and do it naturally. The best way to do this is by empowering private practice owners like you to grow your business through direct-to-consumer marketing. If you're a practice owner with a growth mindset, you'd benefit from a risk-free consultation with a breakthrough growth expert. Go to getbreakthrough.com forward slash podcast offer to take advantage of this unique opportunity. On that call, you'll learn the key principles of how practice owners are helping more people, creating a bigger impact, and building better businesses with Breakthrough Systems. As an added bonus, the team at Breakthrough is giving a $50 Amazon gift card to any of the podcast listeners who attend this growth consultation. Sign up for your growth consultation and $50 gift card at getbreakthrough.com forward slash podcast offer. Again, that's getbreakthrough.com forward slash podcast offer. So uh, I, I know you did a lot of research here, John. Uh, you and I, uh, literally, before we started recording here, we're talking about trends. So what trends are you seeing uh, within the U.S. right now in terms of uh, the economics within the marketplace? So, it, you know, in general, and I, I want to set this up for you. The one thing that we've talked about a lot um, here on the podcast or on webinars, trainings, and that owners are seeing is uh, increased pressure on uh, declining reimbursements right? So literally, as we're recording this, we're on the eve of uh, Medicare and other insurance reductions. So declining reimbursements, less revenue coming in, and then we're yeah. driving up costs with um, essentially inflation. So space is more expensive, construction is yeah. more expensive, students are, mm -hmm. DPTs are coming out of school with record levels of debt. So they're wanting to earn more money. So can you yeah. talk about what you're seeing in the marketplace right now with regards to that? Okay, so what I might do is I might speak to two sides of this. One side is, I guess, the impact of the disruption that's occurring in PT in general. And uh, the second part of that is the opportunity of branding and growth and marketing and what's happening online uh, for PT, uh, not just in the US, but this is predominantly US, but it's also starting to impact the rest of the world as well in, in terms of the fact of what we just come through. We've had two very interesting years out of the pandemic that have caused a lot of disruption within the industry and a lot of changes. Um, however, the industry is on a growth curve. So you're up for about a 4.9% prediction in growth to about $42 billion in revenue. Just for, This is PT treatment. This is not technology, you know, insurance and all that sort of stuff. So the industry is on a growth curve. And this is due to we still have an aging population. Uh, we still have uh, you know, the traditional pressures on growth in the market are, um, are actually trending up. So that's a good thing. The challenge is, is that over the next few years, based on some of the research out of IBIS and the industry itself, uh, the industry needs to is going to have about 27 to 30,000 PTs coming into the market. The problem with that is, as you just mentioned, is the costs are going up, reimbursements are coming down, and this is going to create a squeeze in terms of, uh, in, of profit margins. And a PT coming out into the market is, is going to look at that and go, you know, as a PT, I'm going to make about eighty-one thousand dollars a year as a, a, you know, a, as a clinician. Um, you know, uh, serving about twenty-seven hundred patients a year. Um, uh, you know, my gross uh, net on that's going to be about three hundred thousand to the clinic. Um, and so the, the the numbers aren't stacking up in favour of somebody actually going in and working for another PT clinic. So what you're going to start to see as part of the disruption in the market is this freelancer PT or the micro PT is going to start to emerge because they realize that if they can, you know, if you can get your rent down in New York City down to 15 to 20 grand a year by planting yourself within, within a gymnasium or within a co-working space or within a party center or with uh, where you have a, a customer base that is sitting there with direct access to patients, um, then your costs are fairly minimal. You're going to get to keep a lot of that $300,000 net for yourself so you're not going to earn 80, you're going to probably double or, or, or maybe even 3x uh, your earning capacity in private micro practice as opposed to working in a clinic for somebody else to pay off your student 
yet. So those are some of the changes that are going on. There's massive pressure in hiring. And there already has been in the, in the PT market in terms of finding quality PTs with experience. Uh, so that cre uh, creates issues and problems. The other part of the industry is the private equity firms, uh, companies like Capital IQ, which are one of the largest equity funds in the physical therapy space, uh, is working on major acquisitions and mergers with hospitals and also private clinics or larger clinics in the marketplace. What that means is that they are going to take the risk cost uh, away from a clinician or an owner um, to the point where they're managing, you know, it's corporate management. Uh, and so what's going to happen is you've got to get a 70-30 split between an aggregated buyer. So you're seeing some of the largest, the largest equity uh, changeover, and I'm trying to remember the company, was about a $9.9 .9 billion acquisition through the hospital system in the PT market last year that occurred in the middle of the pandemic. So the, that, the, there's going to be a shift at two ends of the market, um, uh, and the independent PT or the local PT, uh, you know, the rental costs are high, like you just mentioned. Uh, uh, cost of hiring is high because people have demand uh, due to the fact that there is uh, a skill shortage in the market. Uh, so these are all those kind of market pressures that are going on and having um, uh, uh, technology come into play. You've got, um, I believe in, in, you know, some of the things I've been looking at, um, you know, you've got uh, uh, billing structure changing. You're, you know, people, you know, people are moving into a different uh, category uh, in healthcare billing, which is uh, obviously, like you say, causing pressure. So where's the competitive advantage, right? Um, you know, how do you, how do you, uh, build your asset, grow, uh, you know, find some space for yourself in the market, um, you've got to become more visible. Uh, marketing, uh, you know, right now online, this, this device here is the most important computer on the planet, right? Uh, for PT 24-7, this is it, right? Uh, purely because right now we're searching on Google. 90% of all search right now is on a mobile device chat. For healthcare, 90% of all search right now is on a, on a phone. It's not on a PC or desktop or laptop. It's actually on a mobile device. Um, uh, there's a Google's changed the game, and this is what's happening from an SEO point of view and an advertising point of view. So right now, and also to give you perspective, uh, advertising or marketing online makes you recession-proof. Makes you pandemic-proof, makes you recession-proof. If you are not visible online, you don't exist. And the visibility for local PT or, or community PTs right now is going to be uh, dependent upon the map section in Google. Google has changed, it keeps changing the playing field. And for the first time, uh, the pandemic has given Google the opportunity that they've always wanted. And that is that if you want to be visible on Google, you're going to have to pay for it, right? If you do a search for, if I did a search in, you know, um, uh, Harrisburg PA for a PT, Right, there are probably uh, 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 you know probably what 15, 16 options in Harrisburg that I'd, I'd see in local maps, uh, and then I've got um, other supportive like osteopaths and chiropractors, and so we've got a lot of competition in the market. The first two uh, 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 visibilities on Google is a thing called Google Service Ads. So if you go to your mobile and do a search for PT in your local market, what you're going to see is two ads on your mobile phone. That's it, and you're going to have to scroll. So this idea that ranking first page on Google has completely changed because Google allows you five scrolls on your mobile phone, right? That means you're going deeper than 10 searches. And when you hit the bottom of the scroll, right, what happens is Google gives you selections based on your criteria search. The algorithms change, so it's going to help you choose better, right? It's actually trying to think like you in your search. And oftentimes the first search doesn't give us our result. So if the real estate is changing on Google, that means that, that um, less clicks, less clicks for organic search, more clicks for maps, more clicks for ads, right? 67% of all the clicks on the first page of Google, Chad, go to maps. If your clinic's open, you're visible. If your clinic's closed, you're invisible, right? You have to be open, right? That's a key. Uh, or certainly open at the times when people are searching. The other thing also is that you have to optimize your Google business profile in your local market. Because if you do that, you're going to get a, volume, a much better search volume, right? So uh, just to give you a perspective of how much money is being spent on advertising in the middle of the pandemic. So back in 2008, when we had the GFC in the United States, uh, between 2008 and 2011, um, spending in that, in that three-year period 
increased by $17 billion. Advertising went up, didn't go down, right, in the middle of a, a crisis. Last year, 2020, and now with 2021, in one year, $43 billion worth of advertising increase in one year, right? Advertising, as long as you get two bucks for every buck in gross profit you spend on advertising, you're making money. You're recession-proof. So if you're not advertising right now on Facebook, on Google, on TikTok, on other platforms like Instagram, you're invisible because right now, if I can't see you here, you don't exist. That's the danger. That's the changer, right? Um, what's happening right now in the market is where, you know, we... We live with this 24-7. The pandemic forced us to use this technology more than ever before. Video is critical. If you're not using video in your marketing, um, you will not be visible because 80% of video is viewed while people are sitting on a bathroom in a bathroom, right? Can you, can you imagine that, Chad? 80% of people are watching videos while they're sitting on the can, right? Um, and the video... I, I, I honestly, <laughs> not surprised at all. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the other part of this chat is that that uh, people's attention span is very short. So anything over a minute to three minutes is long enough. Uh, if you're going beyond three minutes, people people get lost. They're, they're already scrolling to the next video, right? Or they're speeding up uh, through the video. So they're, 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 they're sc scanning through the video. So video, audio has become important. Here we are on a podcast. You're doing audio. Um, audio has become very, very important because... Right now, in terms of search, we need to, 60% uh, of search right now is, hey Siri, find me a physical therapy practice in, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Hey Alexa, find me a physical therapy practice. One option is CPRS and, physical therapy. So Siri is telling me what the option is, right? Um, but uh, but they're, they're, uh, they're uh, I think it was Madden PT that came up. Um, but uh, uh, the voice is changing, right? Because we're, not, we're no longer, clicky clacking on a small device we're just we're asking questions and it's responding to us so voice video advertising is critical owning your space in maps is very critical so getting the reviews the five star reviews google guarantee but the cheapest thing uh, from an advertising point of view that i would recommend at least adding to is to actually run local google service ads for your service because you at, you will be seen in this device you'll be seeing so lots of things changing uh, lots of things happening technology changing new way new methods of uh, of of, uh, of uh, practice and innovation are changing um but the biggest thing that hasn't changed is the relationship between patient and physical therapist so you know to me um uh, care like the acronym of care right you know it, we can't say, well it should be pair p-a-r-e but i like care care's a little bit better but C-A-R-E is customers are really everything, right? Patients are really everything, right? Uh, your you know, direct access patients to the market is the, has been the growth opportunity for physical therapy. The digital marketing space in physical therapy is blown up because the industry is allowed uh, uh, based on the fact that the competition in the chiropractic market and the osteopaths and all those other industries are impacting on uh, uh, marketing to the same audience for healthcare in the local community. Uh, the industry has opened up the marketing, right? The, the, the changes in the last five or I would say the last seven years have been very dramatic for PT when it comes to marketing online, right? Um, and that's not going to change. That's only going to get become even bigger. The other thing that people need to also realize is, and this I used to talk about this at the, uh, at the breakthrough events, is that right now um, people are communicating on more than 200 channels in social media, right? So it's not just Facebook, it's not just Instagram, but people are communicating with Twitter, they're communicating with TikTok. TikTok is the largest uh, uh, growth um, uh, marketing platform on the planet. Remember those one minute videos? TikTok is key to that type of communication. It's all video, right? Uh, so brand building is gonna become very important. Um, the more visible you are in your community, the more people see you, uh, the more people can find you in multi-channels. So this is why multi-channel marketing is becoming very important. Email is becoming incredibly important right now. Most people think email is going to die it off. It's actually not. It's actually increasing in, in, um, uh, in communication pack, uh, capacity. But the other thing that's growing, and it's purely a consequence of the mobile device, is messaging. 
right? In in person, in time, real time messaging capability, um, in your marketing or on your website, uh, people right now are booking straight from message. They're not even talking or calling you anymore. They're literally going to your site. They see a message. You've got a person on the other end in your practice who's monitoring, or you've got somebody somebody in an office who's monitoring for you, and somebody saying, "Hey, I've got uh, I've got a really I've got a back problem, or I've got an arm, or a knee, or a leg uh, neck problem. Um, I really need to see somebody. Somebody's going to say, "Great, what location? Uh, we've got a practice there. Uh, Doctor Madden is available. Uh, we've got two o'clock or three o'clock. Which of those two times would you prefer?" And all of that done is not done over the phone. It's done on messaging. So people are very much quick to text. So text is going to become important in terms of uh, uh, talking to people. Chat is going to be becoming very important to people because people are using WhatsApp and all the other platforms um, that emerge. There are technologies that merge messaging, including Facebook Messenger and those, into one place. That's going to be placed on people's websites. And so right now, communication is going to be faster. We're going to be speak to text. And, and so the other side is going to be speak to search, right? So we're going to be, we're not even going to be typing. Our thumbs are going to get a, a, a you know, a, a, a bit of pressure release uh, in what we do. So the opportunities for growth for PT um, have always been there uh, because the competitive advantage is how visible you are in the market. So your brand becomes important, visibility becomes important, and engagement becomes important. And what I mean by engagement, I mean personal engagement. Um, you know, having a mobile app for your practice where uh, your patients can get direct access to you in a mobile app uh, is huge, right? Because you can stream in a mobile app. You can do push notifications in a mobile app. You can share uh, um, a lot more information. And essentially what you're doing is if you're a PT, you're putting the local community patient in the, in the palm of their hand. Right. So imagine having Madden PT 24-7 on an app in somebody's mobile phone. And the cool thing about mobile apps is they're getting cheaper to produce. Uh, you used to have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars developing web apps. Right now, you can build a fully functional mobile app for under a couple of hundred dollars, right? You can put video streaming, you can do text messaging in there, you can do social media connection, you can actually uh, make announcements, you can run all your uh, workshops through the app, all that sort of stuff is going on. So that technology is getting cheaper. Um, what that also does is it brand, it, that creates another channel of branding, but it also locks people in. If I've got the, the, the app on my mobile, then I'm, it's the first point of contact. So I'm not gonna go scroll on Google, I'm going to go to where I've got the first point of contact in healthcare on my phone. So if you make it easy, imagine everybody walking into the clinic and you've got a QR code and say, hey, just scan the QR code, download the app. Uh, this is where your bookings are. This is where your information is. Here's your customer patient care after treatment, all in one location. So these are the things that are going on that, uh, that are centric to change. Mobile has a lot to do with it. Voice, the speaking, uh, very, very powerful. Right, that's that's just emerging. So these are all things that are changing for PT and healthcare. Um, uh, you know, uh, the you know, healthcare uh, reimbursements, obviously, like we talked about before, are being squeezed. Um, and this is where uh, you know the cash-based economy is going to grow. The gig economy is going to grow in PT. Um, this is where uh, there's going to be a portion of the market, 20% of the market right now is accounting for about 25% of the entire revenue. So $25 billion worth of, uh, uh, sorry, uh, $20 billion worth of revenue, right? Half is going to 20% of the market, right? The top end market. The rest of that revenue is being dispersed into the smaller end of the market. So uh, those are some of the things that are going on. Omnichannel marketing is very important. Message marketing, very important. Google search, Google business profile in the local market, very important. Um, and video is incredibly important as well. Facebook is growing, Instagram growing, TikTok is on the rise very, very rapidly right now. Uh, it's also cheaper to advertise on some of those other markets. Facebook hasn't very, very, been very friendly in its algorithms, um, but one thing that's happening on Google and Facebook that a lot of people don't realize, Google and Facebook are not um, uh, favoring search what they're favoring is brand. They're looking for brand indicators. So the name of your practice and the name of your service is becoming critical to search, even in Facebook, right? So, uh, so things are changing. 
Um, you know, we've got new things like metaverse coming along uh, that, are, that are changing the game. Uh, a lot of, you know, crypto is a very common word these days um, that's, coming, that's, that's actually eking out into this space. It won't be long before we're going to be paying our bills with cryptocurrency. Um, I believe uh, in Australia already we have clinics that are accepting Bitcoin for services, direct cash. Uh, and that's the other part of this is cash to market. So direct access to cash provides incentives to actually people pay for healthcare in advance without having to incur costs in their insurance. So Tondo and wrap just there. The small things, Chad, just the small things, yeah. Yeah, let, let, so let's uh, I, I unwrap this. I think we can do so in, a, in an organized fashion. The, the first thing that I heard you say, John, is uh, you know, you're, we're seeing a barbell in the market. So on one end, we have practices that are, uh, let's call them solopreneur. Um, mm -hmm. And they're thinking along the lines of, hey, I, I want to be self-employed. I don't want to work for an employer as a clinician. I wanna, I'm generating $300,000 a year in cash or revenue. Um, how can I maximize that? Because I also have a two hundred and fifty dollars to $300,000 student loan, right? Yeah. So, the, and I, I've worked with hundreds of practices that have been there in that space. And uh, PT, Cairo, uh, podiatry, everything across the board now. And the conversation is pretty similar. Usually what I see there, and that does make up a significant portion of the market in PT, um, about 50% in terms of solopreneur. But uh, what, you know, the struggles there are, well, now I need consistent new patient flow. Um, yeah. And, you know, how do I hire? I'm not even sure I want to hire. So I'm not really worried about personnel, but that means that I have to be doing everything. So I have to answer my own phone. I have to be scheduling all the appointments. I have to do all the billing. I have to do all the reconciliation. Um, and everything else. So that, um, that's that world. On the opposite end of the barbell that you were talking about is I'm building a practice for value. I'm building an enterprise. It might be one or two locations or 200 locations, whatever that may be. But ultimately, I'm building something of value and there is an, uh, an equity play for me at the end of that. The same problem there is how can we fill space? How can we fill schedules, right? It's kind of the same game in terms of marketing. And the thing that I've mm -hmm. loved that you've talked about in the past is your, I, and I, uh, I checked out your LinkedIn profile. Um, by the way, I could not believe we weren't connected. So I made sure that happened on LinkedIn. But, um, I, you know, you've, you've been a founder um, or co-founder in eight different businesses now. You're very entrepreneurial. Um, and, you know, I, I know that you're a huge studier. You, you're always gifting me books. And I, the one book that I gifted you that, that was, uh, I, I was always like a prize for me was that Jay Abraham training, because mm -hmm. I know you're a huge Jay Abraham fan and you're talking mm -hmm. about how to grow top line revenue. So whether you're a solopreneur or an enterprise type owner, where you're building a practice of value, there are really essentially three ways that we can increase revenue. Um, mm -hmm. could you go through those? Um, and then I, I'll help you apply them to PT, but I think you will, you've always done a good job of doing yeah. that but the j so, three rules yeah, yeah. so um the one thing i will add that i missed in this whole thing which also is a game changer you're talking about that micro the small the solopreneur pt their biggest advantage is building a strategic alliance relationship with a with a location right in a gym you've got patients patient opportunities coming in in a party center you've got patient opportunities coming in uh, so that that will reduce marketing costs. So strategic alliance for PT is actually a very large opportunity that PT has explored, but not really to the to the level where they could. So one thing uh, you're right, uh, you know, they've got to do everything on their own. But if they can connect themselves to a location where there is an audience coming to that location, that opens up a patient flow for a micro PT. However, they've still got to be doing marketing. They're still got to do their own billing. They're still got to handle scheduling. There's all that stuff that goes into that thing. So there are inherent costs in that. Um, so to speak to the point of uh, <clears throat> the ways we impact on the growth of business, um, basically it works in three silos, right? The first silo is the patient acquisition silo. So how do we acquire uh, patients? If we put our practice on that filter, right, and we put numbers to that, where are our patients coming from, right? So how many are being referred to us by, uh, by you know, hospitals that are still referring or clinics that are still referring, doctors are still referring? 
Like how many patients are we getting direct from the market, from our advertising and marketing and workshops um, in the market? How many patients are being referred by other patients, right? What's the value of pay per patient uh, referral? Um, how many uh, walk buys do we get? How many people are we getting from strategic alliance? So we look at that first solo of patient acquisition um, and look at the numbers in that. The total value, right, uh, uh, we need to now divide that by the average revenue per patient. So the second column, right, so how do we market? So how do we generate more referrals? How do we get more direct access to patients? How do we improve those areas marginally because it will make a significant impact on a compounding effect uh, if we did some calculations? So uh, I think I showed this at, at, uh, at boot camp. So if we would improve the acquisition rate, increase the number of patients coming to the practice, it means that we're building our database and we're building out future referral uh, opportunities and future patient care opportunities. The second column is maximizing revenue or earnings per patient, right? It's not about market share, it's about wallet share, right? So how do we do that? We can add value with other services using things like laser and hydro and all those other therapies on top of our clinical therapy that we provide as a physical therapy practice. We can provide, we can package up education and sell education. There are ways to maximize earnings per patient by creating value packages for patients, uh, creating a, a plan of care that is actually priced correctly in terms of uh, maximizing margins. Um, those are the sorts of things that we can do at the second level. Maximizing earnings per patient is a critical area and there's certain things you can do. Making small adjustments will have a huge impact on earnings per revenue per patient. Right? Um, then we've got the last piece, which is probably one of the most important pieces that physical therapy practice. I know that uh, over breakthrough, this is this is the game changer as far as I'm concerned. It always has been, is the frequency or the relationship that we build, the nurturing aspect of how we get a patient to come back and use other services we provide that they take advantage of for healthcare. So, so in the first case, we've got client patient acquisition. In the second case, we have maximizing revenue earnings per patient. And the third area is nurturing and frequency. Uh, if I've come to my uh, PT for back pain, invariably my neck somewhere along the line or my knee or something's going to happen. If I understand that the PT, and as far as I'm concerned, <clears throat> I'm kind of preaching to the converted here. To me, PT is the highest skill uh, um, uh, healthcare that you can have uh, um, uh, because you're literally one module away from pretty much being a surgeon, right? You, you're, you're going down the doctoral path as an expert in human physiology and hu human movement. Um, and, you know, and that's based, based on neurology, on the physical uh, skeletal uh, aspect, the muscular aspect, um, and the nervous system. So you have, uh, you know, you're literally controlling the body, right? You're, you're, the, you're the healthcare center of the human body uh, to make sure that it's standing upright and, and, uh, and moving in the right direction. So to me, one of the critical factors of uh, growth for, for uh, physical therapy is that education piece of letting people know, say, hey, if you're feeling discomfort in your knee, you need to come to us. Uh, here are some things you need to be aware of to make sure that you're okay with, uh, you know, making sure you're getting back to normal on knee pain. Because if you don't look after that knee, that's going to affect your hips or it's going to affect your back or those sorts of things. So education, that nurturing piece, drives patients back into the practice. <clears throat> it also opens up referrals. But it also, one of the things from a market uh, point of view or an advantage point of view, is you can specialise. A lot of PTs that only specialise in sciatica and back pain, right? They don't do knee and balance and all the other things. So specialisation can actually create a point of difference in the market and you can grow your practice through that as well. So those three areas, client acquisition or patient acquisition, very, very key. How, like if we looked at, there's probably a hundred ways that I could list on how PT acquires patients, right? Um, so whether it be strategic alliance or social media or advertising or referral from a clinic, uh, another clinician uh, for rehabilitation from, uh, from hospitals, uh, from patient referrals. You could list a hundred ways in which you can acquire patients. Workshops in the local market, strategic alliance relationships. Um, you know, uh, you know, you've got the good old direct mail. I mean, who receives mail anymore? What a competitive advantage that would be to actually mail prospective customers within the community about the healthcare you provide, right? So, um, and I think I did the numbers. If you worked out 100 patients uh, 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 based on an average care of, say, $900, 
uh, with uh, one visit per year, uh, you're looking at $90,000 in revenue out of that 100 patients, right? Um, uh, if you increase the patient acquisition by only 10%, so you went from 100 patients to 110 patients, right? Purely by looking at some of those ways to market or generate more, it's not hard to make that adjustment. If we were to look at adding our services or packaging our services and increasing our prices marginally by 10%, so from $900 to $990, adding an extra $90 uh, in our packaging, and purely that's a, you know, that's not a difficult thing to do. Right? So it's a 10% increase in margin. And if we were to increase the frequency, if we got one in 10 of every other patients to come back or refer another patient to us, the, it goes from 90,000 to 119,000, right? So that small incremental increase in each pillar, it's a 33% increase in revenue, right? At the other end, not a 10% increase in revenue. So um, little hinges swing big doors, little changes create a huge butterfly effect. But if you can, if you make those changes in the right places, uh, revenue wise, they can make a huge impact. And I think the other things, uh, you know, there are two people in the, in the, in the, uh, in the clinical world, Chad, there is the clinician, the person who is there to care for the community, it's the vocation in life, they are there to serve, right? But then you have the practice owner, the business owner, because they realize that they're running a business. The only way that they can scale is to bring in more clinicians into their practice uh, uh, to serve more patients in the community. Yeah, so they're running a business. They're not being a, 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 a you know, they're, they're a practice owner. And so if they put their practice owner hat on, they're the ones, if they apply the model that we talked about, and if they're using breakthroughs, marketing systems and software um, and the, uh, the email marketing and the Facebook advertising and the Google advertising structure you've got with funnels, right? Um, that will make a massive impact on a practice, yeah? So scale is really done through people. Right, so it's margin and people that are going to grow the difference in your practice. Yeah, and so yeah, so I don't know if that speaks to what you're talking about. You you, you nailed it. Yep. The um the yeah. So this podcast is brought to you by Breakthrough, the leading platform for practice growth. Breakthrough has helped over 1,500 healthcare practice owners leave a bigger impact in their communities and grow a larger business. As the founder of Breakthrough, I've developed a library of educational resources on practice growth. These are based on my learnings from my own experience as a private practice owner, plus the experience working with thousands of other owners in the Breakthrough community. If you have a growth mindset and you're hungry for free resources to help you grow, check out Breakthrough's resource hub. Go to getbreakthrough.com forward slash resources, where you'll find on-demand trainings, tools, templates, planning guides, and a host of other free resources. Again, you can find these at getbreakthrough.com forward slash resources. If you're interested in getting direct support with your practice growth, you can request a free growth consultation at getbreakthrough.com forward slash podcast offer. Three silos that you talked about. Number one was more new patients, multiple ways to do that. Number two was essentially more revenue or um, more revenue per plan of care, and that is both yeah. cash pay services. The other big one that we talk about, uh, uh, John, and uh, other people have mentioned here is just not losing out on people that ghost us, right? So yeah. the patient comes yeah. in, creating a full service five-star experience so that that patient just completes their plan of care. That frequently yeah. can give us the 10% bump there. And then the third silo was more reactivated patients. So I saw you last year for your back or your knee. Now you're coming in for your shoulder um, or referrals from those, uh, from that patient list, which is the, the nurturing component uh, that we do there that you talked about. The, I, I wanna dive into the, um, so the two big players that we see now um, in advertising, which is a, a button for PTs, both big and small, is uh, you know we have the Facebook, Instagram family, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And we have the Google YouTube family. Yeah. And then, and then I would just say like the other bucket. So yeah. TikTok it, for us, like the way that we think about that is today, TikTok isn't really our, um, that that's not where our avatar is or mm -hmm. today them, them may change. Right. Um, but 45 to 64 year old family oriented female, um, not on TikTok a lot. She tends to be That's watching. That's the largest growth rate in TikTok. That is the largest growth market in TikTok. That I mean, market right now. 
maybe not at least in central Pennsylvania yet that I've seen yet. <laughs> I, I know they watch. So what's crazy is I know they watch YouTube. So they yeah. watch the TikTok video on YouTube, which is a yeah. whole other world. Um, yeah. But n nonetheless, uh, so we have different media. They'll change. I mean, maybe by the time this is pub this podcast episode is published, that, that, you know, there, there may be changes in the market. But the, the way that I started to think about this was, um, I know you're a fan of uh, Eugene Schwartz, Breakthrough Advertising. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, so for some odd reason this past year, Carl mentioned it to me and I reread it. And I had never thought about this before, but there are five phases of... Uh, five stages of awareness there. And on yeah. one of the scale, we have the unaware, which mm -hmm. is essentially storytelling and long-term nurturing. And the other side is uh, fully aware. And this is like, I know you, I trust you, I love you. I've been to you for PT in the past and I wanna come back to you again, whatever the yeah. service may be. Um, and then we have product aware, solution aware, and, uh, oh, I just blanked on the problem, problem solution, product aware. Um, in the center there in terms of the awareness levels. Google and YouTube seem to be amazing for in our early testing where we actually have copy for each of the stage of awareness. Mm -hmm. They're awesome for the middle. So yeah. if I understand chiropractic care, physical therapy, podiatry, I understand what it is and that they can solve my problem. It's awesome in terms of the brand building and the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, they're not really good at the unaware, right? Yeah. which which kind of makes sense facebook and the instagram family they're the best <laughs> where they excel is in the unaware because mm -hmm. you, you have more time you can tell a story um mm -hmm. and in in terms of the uh the the higher levels of awareness it's it almost doesn't make sense for us to advertise there so mm -hmm. I, I i was wondering if you saw trends on that how and if you could speak to how like facebook and instagram are used differently in terms of what you're seeing yeah versus Google and, yeah. uh, and YouTube, I, because I think that would be helpful to all so, of us as healthcare clinicians. So Instagram and Facebook are broadcast uh, channels, right? Your, if you're promoting or you're sharing information, you're sharing it into com communities. The average person has about 130 connections in their Facebook likes, right? So, so imagine your average patient, if there were 10 patients, that's 1,300 people that they have connection or access to. And so the cool thing about Facebook is that you can, you can create an audience or you can create uh, based on an algorithm of, of interests, you can actually um, go out into a targeted community and broadcast uh, your intent to say, hey, you need to pay attention to your uh, back, right? If you're feeling neck pain or discomfort in your neck or in your shoulders, you know, you need to take, the longer you take to take care of that niggling pain, um, uh, the more that's going to cause problems for you later. So Facebook and Instagram are, are great broadcast, personalized marketing. They're awesome for personalization, awesome for broadcasting because uh, nobody could, nobody's searching for anything on Facebook. What they're going to see is things that grab their attention through advertising in that market. Now, YouTube is also a broadcast market as well. But like you say, it's more about uh, people a little bit more aware, a little bit more uh, uh, zeroed into their search, right? So they're actually searching in YouTube, whereas you can't search in Facebook. So the difference between the two channels, Facebook is a brilliant brand. It's a brilliant place to, uh, to build authority, uh, to let people know that you exist for visibility in your local community market. And if you use certain aspects of Facebook, especially if you uh, create content uh, or advertising that is valuable and shareable, so there's an educative piece to it uh, in that unaware market, um, that creates stickiness. It also creates engagement. It, it, it builds engagement, it builds shareability. People share ads. If they see something that's really cool, that's valuable, that will share that advertising. So Facebook is very, very good at that unaware because it's it pops up, right? It's almost like, hey, have you thought about this? And it's in your feed, right? So it's a very personal thing. YouTube, on the other hand, is a searchable platform and a broadcast platform. So people will subscribe to YouTube channels that they like. Uh, there are healthcare channels that have millions of subscribers out there, right? There are PTs, and some of them are breakthrough members who have uh, celebrity status on YouTube, right? Uh, because they're educating the market. They're providing people, uh, you know, things that you need to be aware of in your care. They're providing um, uh, 
uh, information about, you know, uh, how you manage your health over a longer period, how do you manage family health. Um, you also have the opportunity from a branding point of view to say, hey, this is what our clinic's all about, right? This, you know, we're in, we're in your community, we're in your market. Uh, our goal is to care for you at this level, and this is where our intent is. And so YouTube and Facebook not only are central to location, but you can attract people out of location uh, to your practice as well. So um, uh, Google loves brands. They love people who are providing regular content in the market. They will actually, your, your little YouTube video will appear in search when you're searching. And that's the cool thing about YouTube. So you're right, YouTube is in that where you have a level of awareness and you're building that relationship and that, 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 um, that confidence in your brand. YouTube's very powerful for that. Facebook is brilliant at opening that communication, right? It's letting people know to say, hey, have you thought about using this type of care to look after yourself? Um, so those two channels, Facebook, Instagram, are very, very potent in terms of uh, in terms of this device, right? It's full on mobile, yeah. Um, and so yeah, so that's the distinction between the two uh, marketing channels. But messaging, like the capability of messaging, Chad, is growing very, very fast. Um, and I'll give it. I'll give an example of this out of out of healthcare, right? The, 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 this is an experience uh, I had. So. Uh, you know, I, I scuffed the tires or the rims on my car, and I got you know we've got a nice new car, and I don't like having scuffed rims, right? So what I do, I look for somebody who repairs tire rims on Google, and I find a place, and it's open, right? And so I click to call, and I call the place, and they they're saying, hey, all our lines are really busy right now. Your information is very important to us. So we have your mobile phone. Somebody's going to message you within 30 seconds to respond to your inquiry. So what I get, I get a text message 30 seconds after I make the phone call. And it says, hey, we want to help you with your room repair. Can you do a small favor? Take a photo with your iPhone and then uh, text the photo to us and we'll give you an instant quote. So I take a photo, text the quote to them. I get an instant quote, right? Um, then they, I said, yep, that's really good. And they said, listen, here's your quote. We can have somebody there at two o'clock this afternoon, guaranteed. Would you like us to book somebody in? I've got Tony in the area. He's going to come and look after you. And so what do I do? I need my rooms repaired. I've got a quote. Uh, yeah, okay, let's get it done. Five minutes to two, Tony turns up, right? He sits there and does the, does the repair. Payment on the phone. My, my uh, Our team has just sent you a link. You like your rims, love rims. Okay, so if you can just take, take care of payment on the phone here, you'll notice on your phone there's a message. Yes, link, Apple Pay, done. I didn't speak to a human being other than Tony repairing my my wheel rims, right? Um, which, was in, which was incredible, right? Now, I searched on Google and I went past. There were people that were closed. And I didn't call those people, but I called the guy that was open, right? So now think about how that applies to healthcare. I'm searching away, looking for a local practice to help me with my back pain, right? I'm struggling. And so I'm going to call you. And rather than uh, 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 me waste time trying to figure this out, um, a text message appears, right, on my phone and saying, hey, thank you for inquiring. You're inquiring about back pain or you've inquired about knee pain or whatever selection they've made uh, off the search criteria in Google, right? Um, and then it says, look, we've got schedules here with Dr. Uh, Dr. Madden at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock this afternoon. Of those two choices, if you just click whichever one on the link here, it will automatically schedule in with Dr. Uh, Dr. Madden, right? Boom, we have an instant booking. Then we have a confirmation of booking. And if we want to, we can actually do the payment on our phone, right? We don't have to handle transaction or anything at the counter anymore. So the capability of the technology to make it easier for how people respond right now, you know, um, is going to speed up. It's going to actually set you apart from the, from the market. And the speed of response is critical in marketing. So if you look at Facebook advertising, the number one problem with Facebook advertising is not that Facebook ads don't work. Facebook ads work brilliantly. What's missing is the response times. If you take, if you, if they're not getting a message within the first 60 seconds or some form of engagement within the first 60 seconds, they are scrolling to the next practice, right? And that's the other thing is if your uh, website or your practice portal uh, that people have access to online, takes more than four seconds to load on mobile, they're looking for the next practice. Yep. So you can capture 
using Facebook and YouTube um, and that technology far more effectively uh, than any other form of marketing at the moment. But I, I don't, I'm a big fan of TikTok, Chad, but let me tell you, it is taking over the growth rate. The, that that uh, market segment of 40-year-olds to 65-year-olds that is the largest and fastest growing segment of women and men on the planet on that platform. It is the fastest. And the cool thing about it, it's cheap to advertise. It's back in the day where Google started advertising, it's cents on the dollar for clicks, right? Uh, which is very, very attractive. But that's a whole other platform. And there's another there's another platform coming, Chad, but I don't want to mention that because that's just going to blow people's minds. Uh, just drop a name, John. That's all we're asking for. <laughs> Well, um, I think, and this is, this is, we're talking about the next, uh, uh, I would say we're talking about the next five to 10 years, the next five to 10 years. Uh, there's two words that are going to come up. There's gamification, right? That's one, which has already been out, but, but this is going to become even bigger. Um, but we have the real estate in the new metaverse that has been created. There is a significant amount of revenue that is being invested in creating a virtual connection with people in the marketplace. And as a platform for direct access and reach, it is going to be incredibly powerful uh, for the healthcare world. It will be a very big, significant game changer in the way that we communicate with our clinicians, uh, with healthcare, uh, what is going on uh, for, uh, for people in that marketplace and what's coming is frightening it is frightening uh the changes that are going to happen so i can't i'm kind of feeling old chad i'm feeling old uh because the technology is uh, working a lot faster than uh, than the human brain is at the moment but uh, there are significant opportunities there are also healthcare providers right now that are investing in stakes in metaverse um uh, uh, platforms so it's just me it's just that's where the attention is going to be driving you're going to hear a lot more about it um, and it's like, how do we take advantage of the piece of that pie in relation to sharing our practices with a whole bunch of community of people that are actually sitting there on purpose, wanting to engage uh, with healthcare online? Yeah, great. Um, yeah, I, a couple of things. So every time I hear about metaverse or anything Web3 related at all, mm -hmm. um, I, I always just go to uh, the YouTube channel of the mm -hmm. videos that I posted 11 years ago when th mm -hmm. that was a big thing. And just, just to make sure people are still there. And I checked, um, we're, we're doing okay. <laughs> we're, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. We're doing yeah, okay. Yeah. We're doing yeah, yeah. in the real world. We're doing fine. Yeah. But these, these be changes changed. are being, these changes that these are not changes that are being introduced to us. These are changes that are being forced upon us. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, this technology is not something that's, just seeping in and you know the blockchain and all that sort of stuff is a very very big part of our new world uh, when you have banking groups uh, who are putting uh, crypto uh, currency on their internal applications when you have morgan stanley taking uh, uh, payments in crypto for its banking customers right now uh, things are changing in how we uh, uh, transact this is going to make th th at some level um, I believe this type of transaction is actually going to be far more profitable uh, for practice purely because, and one of the things that the disruption of, of, uh, of currency exchanges is that it takes away the middleman. Yep. This, is the, this yep. is the thing. It's going to take away the complexity of some of the cost, and that cost becomes a direct benefit to those who are using the, uh, the platforms and the structure. So... Yeah, things are, things are changing. They're changing pretty quick. 10 years is a very short time, Chad. 10 years is a very short time uh, sure. in the tech, tech world. But, uh, you know, we have uh, aging populations in the Western world. Uh, I believe PT will be bigger and stronger and growing uh, more than ever. Um, and I think, and I, and I read somewhere that, the, um, that even uh, Congress is looking at subsidizing um, ways to train PT in the market as well. So uh, they understand that it is, a, it is a problem for healthcare that uh, in actual fact, I'm just trying to find, uh, uh, is it the, um, yeah, the, uh, it was a, an article in the Alliance of Physical Therapy is actually brought out in May 21. Um, 
uh, Congress is taking action to grow the physical therapy workforce. So they know that there is a lack or there is a, a skill shortage in the market, as there is a skill shortage in every market right now, Chad. Yep, yep, this yep. is a big thing in, in, uh, in PT uh, that has always been a challenge. So, um, so yeah, interesting Great. times. Interesting John, times. John, you've covered a ton of ground here from, uh, you, you know, talking about the barbell and the, the separation and uh, differences in what's going on in the marketplace right now with careers and overhead and uh, financial pressures. You've talked a lot about marketing, the, the three ways to grow revenue, uh, top line revenue. You, you talked about that. You covered Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google, uh, TikTok, and uh, the two other gems to keep an eye on for the next 10 years. What is the best way if somebody wanted to reach out to you? I see you have the consulting unleashed. What's the best way for our listeners to get in touch with you? Just John at consultingunleashed.com. Great. You can just, you know, just say John at consultingunleashed.com and, and uh, it'll get to me. So, yeah. Awesome. John Logar, you're a gem, man. Thank you so much for being on here and doing this. Appreciate it. I'll come back anytime you want, man. Great. We'll, we'll line it up again for sure. Thanks, man. Remember to visit getbreakthrough.com to access our free resource library designed specifically for private practice growth. While you're there, make sure you register for a complimentary growth assessment to learn about potential opportunities for growth in your local market. Again, thank you for tuning into the Grow Your Practice podcast and supporting our mission to help people in pain get back to normal naturally.